Um, but after after an hour, we'll have a we'll have a very short break, and we'll continue the discussion, uh, like in a more informal and uh, not uh, not recorded. Uh, okay, so please remind. Uh, let me remind you to please mute yourself. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, uh, you can either use the chat uh, for everyone or just send me, uh, but I, I think it's better if it's uh, the chat for everyone. Um, so when Mayam is speaking, uh, I think we'll only take uh, clarification questions. And you know, uh, more uh, substantive questions will be, uh, will be kept for after. Uh, so you mute yourself. Uh, you can you can show the video though. So <laughs> no one is showing. I mean, there's David and uh, uh, only is showing the video. So I think it would be nicer maybe if we can see some of the faces. It, it you know <laughs> uh, it kills a bit the impression that you're uh, speaking to a wall. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, so Maya, I guess I've said all I wanted to say, and uh, the floor is yours. You have uh, 40 minutes. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. So let me share my screen practice this yesterday. So hopefully it's working. And let's see. Uh, make it the screen. So can everyone see my screen now? Okay, great. Okay, everything's fine. Okay, uh, okay. let me start. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me. It would have been better if it was in Toulouse. Uh, I love dessert, uh, but uh, it's uh, great uh, to uh, be able to present my work. So today what I'm going to be doing is uh, talking about optimal rating system on platforms and I'm going to do this, uh, try to do this impossible task of presenting three papers in 40 minutes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so this presentation would be based on uh, three papers. Uh, the, the first one is an empirical work with uh, Xian Kui, Giancarlo Spaniolo, and Steve Tedales. So this is about, uh, it's an empirical work where I'm looking at what the impact of certification and what happens when you change the certification threshold on different parts of the market. So, I'm going to present only the results of this paper. Not, I'm not going to go through the details. And uh, then the second paper, which I'm going to be spending most of my time, is about optimal quality rating. So in that paper, we are going to be looking at uh, more theoretically what would be optimal uh, when you're designing a reputation system and a rating system. And if uh, I have time, I'm going to go uh, present some results from a third paper. Uh, so the difference between the second and the third is that the second one, I'm, uh, we are only looking at adverse selection. And we are assuming that the quality of the sellers are fixed. And, but in the third one, we allow for more hazards. So I'm sort of, I will be just presenting you some of the results to see how the results are different when you have to take a uh, think about moral hazard as well as adverse selection. Okay, so let me get the, into the uh, presentation. Uh, so I guess uh, the audience here know that all know that asymmetric information is. Uh, can, can be very tricky and information design uh, can help when we have markets with asymmetric information. Uh, and there are, many case, uh, there are many examples, especially on platforms and two-sided markets. So eBay and Airbnb are some examples, but uh, there are many others uh, like Uber, uh, Upwork, if, uh, you're hiring uh, some uh, someone from internet. They're all uh, 
and there are a lot of these markets with asymmetric information and uh, but this is not just a new thing it has been around for a long time Akerlof papers was uh, quite a long time ago and uh, you have this problem and uh, in credit uh, ratings for consumers and corporate debt markets also you have uh, the certification of doctors and restaurants the common features for these markets is that you have adverse selection as well as more hazard and the intermediary, uh, so here you have an intermediary who usually observes more information uh, than uh, one side of the market. So they have a bit more information and they want to decide what to transmit uh, to the other side. So what I'm going to be answering in these papers uh, is uh, these are uh, some of the main questions. One is that is there a thing as too much information? Why not just uh, intermediary transmit all the information to the other side and let them decide. Is there a thing that they actually, the other side actually prefers to not see some information? Is there some benefits of hiding some information? And then uh, the question of optimal design uh, comes into play. Uh, the second question is, uh, are the both sides of the market value the information the same way? So if, for example, on eBay, you have buyers and sellers, uh, are sellers better off sometimes at hiding where buyers prefer to see the information or vice versa? And the same goes through for the other kind of market. And uh, another question which we answer actually mostly in the first paper is to see how uh, reputation mechanism, information system, uh, impact incumbents and interns differently. And we want to see how these different uh, part segments of the market are impacted. Uh, should we think about them separately or they're sort of impacted the same? And the other one that I'm going to give you some intuition for is uh, that why we see a lot of simple signals and certifications uh, in a lot of uh, platform. So a lot of times we see uh, platforms giving different badges or they have like five, zero, one to five uh, ratings. So it's not very elaborate uh, certification mechanism and I'm giving you some uh, intuition of why that might be the case. Okay, so let me start with uh, the first paper. So uh, the first paper uh, is mainly about certification. So there are a lot of uh, marketplaces that labor sellers who meet some minimum quality thresholds. Uh, so they sort of do give some certification match. So for eBay, which we are looking at this paper, uh, they have this eBay top rated seller or ETRS badge. Uh, Airbnb had this ABAB Superhost badge that you might have seen when you used to travel back in uh, ancient history now <laughs> and uh, hopefully sometime in future. Uh, and then in Upwork, you can have, they have this Upwork top rated badge that they give to uh, top rated sellers. Okay. So the benefit of the badge is that it mitigates some of the asymmetric information problem, but on the other hand, it can be a barrier of entry, especially uh, if getting the badge is very hard and it's very valuable, then you might have uh, sellers not wanting to enter the market. And uh, that can be a problem. So what do we do in this paper? In this paper, we are going to be looking at some uh, policy that happened, a uh, change of policy that happened on eBay, which they make the make attaining this badge much harder. So beforehand, uh, as you can see, about 10% of the sellers on eBay had the badge. And afterwards, it dropped sharply to 4%. Uh, 
so you might think, okay, 10% is not a lot, but these sellers, or 4% afterwards is not a lot, but these sellers are disproportionately selling uh, a lot of items on eBay. So uh, these 10% of sellers beforehand were selling more than 50% of the items on eBay. So this drop was uh, pretty sharp afterwards. So uh, we want to see what's the impact of this on incumbents, on entrants, and uh, also uh, on total worker, uh, especially consumers' welfare. So what we see, okay, these are the questions that we try to answer in this paper. So we want to see how the incentive of new sellers uh, to enter the market has changed. So when you make this getting the bag much harder, does that uh, uh, play as a barrier to entry? And does that make it, uh, does it make, uh, make it harder for uh, new sellers to enter the market? So what we see is actually, it really depends on the quality of the sellers. So there is, the effects is uh, heterogeneous in quality of the sellers. So sellers who, uh, which have very high quality actually uh, ha in, have now more incentive to enter. The idea here is that these sellers whose quality is higher now they get the badge still before and after this policy change, but afterwards, given that very few people have this signal, they get much more value from this uh, badge. And as a result, uh, they have more incentive actually to enter the market. And interestingly, the opposite is also true uh, and we see a little bit, not as a strong uh, um, evidence, but a little bit of evidence of some improvement in incentive on the lower end of the qualities as well. So this is now the case that these very low quality sellers are now pulled with uh, better sellers. So they have, uh, we had these, uh, let me go back to these pictures. We have these sellers who lost their badge, their, their badge before, that are not, not badge anymore. So now the sellers who were not badge beforehand are pulled with these uh, sellers who are sort of middle quality, high end of quality, and they can be better off. And this has increased their incentive to enter the market. And also we see a bit of um, disincentive for the sellers in the middle range of quality because these guys uh, had higher incentive and higher probability of getting the badge before, but now they don't. And so they are not gonna be entering as much. And we wanna see if we can see the same kind of impact for the incumbents about uh, who are like on the exit side. And actually what we see is the mirror effect here. And we see less exit from the two tails of the distribution. So for the qual higher quality guys will exit uh, less often and we see more exit from the middle. So just exact opposite of what we see above. So we see a lot of uh, actions happening on the selection part. Here, so for both sellers entering into the market and sellers exiting the market, I want to see what what kind of impact we see on the quality. So, like if people start to improve their quality, uh, um, uh, as now getting the badge is more valuable, and uh, there are fewer people who are getting the badge. But we don't see a lot of impact. We see some but the impact is not a lot. So what we see is that the sellers who were very close to getting the badge, but they were just below the threshold to get the badge, they sort of push their, some of them push their quality a bit higher to get the badge. Uh, but we don't see a lot of actions in other parts of the quality. Uh, spectrum. Uh, so one thing, for example, that I expected was to see some more actions 
uh, on the higher end, but we didn't see uh, a lot of impact there. And for the VFR implications, we see some uh, improvement for buyers on average, uh, but um, about two, three percent. Okay, uh, so I'm, I think I'm going a bit too slow uh, to make sure that I can get to the second paper, I have enough time for the second paper. So what do, what's the main takeaways here uh, is that um, for digital platform is that the certification policies uh, affects quality distribution. It's not just, you shouldn't just think about the average quality. You have to think about the uh, quality distribution. It can broaden or contract the quality range depending on what you do. And uh, so it, it depends like uh, if you're a marketplace, it really depends on what you want to maximize, what's your preferences here. If you care more about the sellers in the middle or sellers on the high end or low end, then it impacts uh, the optimal choice of uh, certification threshold for you. So if you want to have more of the high end sellers, so for example, like if you kick it started, you want to have like this uh, products that uh, have a million, like a very high number of supporters, you want to be very specific on the high end and try to uh, incentivize those guys to come. But if you're Uber and you don't care about people uh, driving people, uh, others with Teslas and you just care about the average quality, you don't want to be giving some signal that uh, gives um, or like incentives to very high quality uh, drivers. And the other thing was that uh, it seems that the quality control policy seems to be more about affecting selection rather than uh, changing quality. We saw some impact, but very little. Uh, any questions here or should I continue to the second paper? Okay. No, there's no question. Okay, so now uh, let me go to this paper that I'm gonna go actually into the model and give you a little bit more detail. Uh, so what you have noticed is that in that paper, uh, we had a simple model that sort of guide us into what kind of um, empirical work we wanted to do, but we didn't uh, have a like a very strong uh, complicated model that we can look at what's the optimal uh, level of uh, information disclosure. And uh, the model was not, uh, uh, we didn't actually identify the model, so it wasn't, uh, uh, it was a reduced form analysis. So what, uh, we didn't answer this question, okay, what is the optimal um, and as a function of different parts of the um, assumptions on the market. So what I'm going to do uh, in the second paper and what we did in the second paper is actually doing that. So uh, we want to see what's the impact of improving information on welfare and then you can define welfare uh, on about consumer, producer, total uh, welfare or some base on consumer and producer and we want to answer what's going to be the optimal level of information disclosure. Uh, and uh, we want to see what's the role of the uh, uh, role of supply, especially and demand considerations. Uh, and also um, on, on your choice of optimal information disclosure. And also I'm going to go over uh, some results about what happens when you want to give four or five signals and what would be the optimal. So for example, if you're just giving one signal, so if you're certifying a set of sellers, so like just this badges that we just talked about, what would be the optimal threshold put and uh, how much uh, of the gap in the total welfare you can pose by just including one, two, three signals. Okay, so let me start uh, on the model. Uh, and let me slow down a little bit. Okay, so here uh, we have a unit mass of firms. 
we assume that uh, we assume that they have a quality z that's come from distribution f of z and we're assuming that this distribution of quality is fixed so here we only have adverse selection no moral hazard in this paper as i said the third one was the is the one that includes more hazard and uh, we're assuming that we have comp uh, competitive markets so you can think of the uh, supply function which is just going to be uh, first derivative of cost function to be uh, the deciding factor here for the sellers uh, and you're assuming that uh, the cost function is the same for all producers okay so that's the supply side of the market so for the uh, sellers or producers they have a quality and the cost function is the same for everyone. So depending on the price they're getting, they're gonna be deciding what quantity to uh, produce, which is going to be uh, S of P. And that's just the first order of uh, uh, margin cost. That, that's the margin cost. Okay, uh, so the demand side. We have a mass M of consumers and they have a unique demand and they have to choose between all the options present to them. And the utility they have is gonna be Z plus theta minus P. So this theta is gonna come from a distribution psi of theta. Uh, so that's the type of the buyer. So that determines the demand function and uh, so they z you can see uh, come is the quality of the item they're getting or the expected quality of the item they think they're getting depending on the signal they see and then they have to pay a price of p so that will be subtracted from the utility and we are assuming that outside good is normalized to zero so, uh, so this is just a fancy way of saying that they have a demand function. So for example, if uh, quality Z is zero, uh, this is gonna be their demand function. And if uh, they know the average quality of a group is ZL, this will uh, shift the demand function for them up. And if, for example, you have uh, two groups, so for example, you're certifying, certifying a group, one group and not the other, and the, uh, the, uh, the group that are certified have the average quality of DH, they will have the red, the upper uh, demand function, and the others, uh, the low guys will have the lower blue uh, demand function. So uh, one thing to note here is that in equilibrium, uh, you, uh, these buyers should be indifferent between the choices. So if you have uh, different sellers with different qualities selling at different prices, the Z minus P for everyone should be the same. And uh, the way that we have, uh, um, given that the way that we have modeled this, uh, they sort of actually, uh, the value of this uh, additional Z would be all consumed in P. Uh, so it, it, it's not gonna be a, a big factor for the consumers, but it will be important for the whole market. So here we wanna talk about the optimal information disclosure. Okay, so, uh, so what, what do we have here? Uh, so we have that buyers uh, share a common prior. So let's say they all know the average quality of the sellers. And here we want, as a planner, the planner has to choose what information to disclose. Let's assume that the planner knows F. F was the distribution of quality of the um, seller. So it can be coming a function of that, but uh, for simplicity, just assume uh, the planner knows all the information. They know exactly the type of the seller. And then they have to decide what information to reveal. Uh, and the information that they're going to be revealing uh, would be, has to have the same mean uh, as F, 
but they can hide some information. So it can be uh, coming, any mean preserving contraction of F can be an information that they're going to be releasing. So they can do some garbling of information. Uh, so they can uh, hide some information, uh, but they, uh, um, uh, they can potentially uh, give exactly F or the other extreme. They can just give no information and just give, get the, give the mean of quality, which is uh, known by buyers anyway. So it's like giving no information. Okay, so what's the problem that they're gonna be solving if, uh, uh, so they're gonna be choosing a G from this uh, script G uh, set. So they're gonna be uh, maximizing uh, this expression. So here we are assuming that the weight they put on consumer surplus is gamma. And uh, this Q of G is the quality, the equilibrium output uh, quantity sign. So the planet problem is gonna be maximizing here the, um, they wanna choose a G uh, member of this uh, uh, script G to maximize this weighted um, welfare. So this is uh, one minus gamma is the weight they put on the uh, profit of the sellers. Uh, and here, this would be the welfare uh, for a consumer cell phone. Okay, so this is uh, the demand function, uh, the inverse demand function for that consumers. And this P is the uh, price in the market for uh, quality uh, zero. Okay, so let me stop here, see if there is any questions. Or can I continue? So, so what, what do the buyers know? So the buyers uh, see this signal G and let's assume that uh, beforehand they only know the average, which is also uh, in G, so they don't know anything else. But we have some extensions when, where they have some prior information, but we need to have that to be common prior. Everyone share that information. Um, it will be sort of similar. But, but there's something I, I, I probably misunderstood. Uh, I thought that, so when you introduce heterogeneity among sellers, mm -hmm. um, so the buyers observe the seller's type? When, okay. oh. No, oh, so, the, the uh, so the buyers only see this signal of the seller. So this G can be, okay, badging some sellers. This G can be telling you, okay, one a star, two a star, three a star, four a star, uh, or it can be exactly the quality of the seller. So it depends on what uh, the planner is going to disclose. So what I had uh, here was, okay, this Z uh, for the utility that I had here was uh, the ex what was the expected quality that buyers were observing. So it can, it is a function of uh, Q. So it can be the same for everyone if there is only one signal. I mean, if there's no signal and they say, okay, it's just average quality. So it depends uh, on the signal, the G signal that it's um, transmitted. Okay. Okay, so any other questions? No. Okay, so here, uh, before I go to the result, let me um, give you some intuition here what happens in this market. Uh, so here, when, for example, you only care about the consumers, so here you just, you want to maximize only this part. What happens is that this, uh, you have this, two different effects of uh, giving 
more information about the sellers. One is that as you give more information about the sellers, uh, you're going to be uh, making more dispersions on uh, the prices in the market. So if, for example, if you don't give any information, there is only one price in the market and everyone, every seller in the market is getting that price. What does that mean? It means that all the sellers in the market are going to be producing the same level. So high quality sellers and low quality sellers are producing exactly the same level. Okay, so when that happens, uh, uh, you, uh, so you have the same level of uh, quantity for each seller, but uh, co high quality and low quality sellers. So you have a lot of uh, um, mixing of qualities. So this can be uh, bad for the buyers because the average quality of the items on the market is going down. But what happens actually here is that given that uh, the, the buyers are paying that extra value on uh, quality, that might not be actually uh, that important. What is more important for the buyers is going to be the coming from this quantity in the market. So when you have uh, uh, when you have no information, going back to again to no information about the sellers, the total quantity is going to be a function of this average price which this average price is coming from uh, the average quality in the market. And uh, that, the level of this quantity uh, depends on the supply function. So for example, if your supply function is uh, convex, that actually uh, giving no information would reduce uh, the quantity in the market. And the reason here is that, okay, the high qualities and low qualities, they're all getting a price that is on average sort of low and everyone is producing a little bit. When the supply function is convex, if you give some information, now you will have this high quality sellers getting uh, higher prices and producing a lot more items. And that will push the quantity in the market higher and that would be beneficial for the consumers. So uh, then you will get to a case where it's uh, better to give more information for the consumers and otherwise not. So let me actually go uh, with uh, these effects of information a bit more uh, slowly here because that's sort of the main idea of the paper is that if you give uh, more information, it, it spreads out the sellers according to their quality. And so here the direct effect is you have this reallocation of uh, output from low to high quality producers, which uh, actually the benefits of this extra quality is arbitrage uh, away and uh, it's sort of translated to higher profits because the prices are going to be higher because all the consumers who want to get this higher quality has to high, pay higher prices and because they need to be uh, indifferent, the consumers need to be indifferent on the margin. They're not getting the benefits actually. Uh, the indirect effect is that the total output can change. So the total output is going to be increased if S is convex. So that's actually beneficial for the consumer, but it's going to be bad for producers. And it's bad for the producers because uh, it will uh, decrease the price as a function of Q. So that if you look at the price as a function of Q, when you have no quality, so for quality zero, that's going to be going lower and it sort of uh, pushes the prices down uh, for the consumer, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the sellers and bad, as bad for the sellers, but good for the consumer. So here, the indirect effects is sort of 
uh, goes in two opposite effects for the consumers versus producers and, uh, and as a result we get some mixing of the results. So here this picture sort of uh, shows the uh, whole results that we find here and uh, that when assets convex and we care about the consumers more, you want to do full disclosure and the same is true when S is concave and uh, gamma is less than half. But when uh, gamma is, you care more about the consumers and the supply is concave, uh, it depends on uh, uh, if S prime uh, over S double prime is increasing. So for example, if it's increasing, you want to do full disclosure at the beginning and then pooling. And otherwise you want to do pooling and then full disclosure. So here you want to disclose some information, but uh, you want to see when you want to disclose some information and it depends on if the first effect is dominant versus the second effect is dominant. So the first effect when you have the reallocation is more determined by S, S prime and the second effect is more determined by S double prime. And depending on uh, the, which direction is, so this would be a lot of positive and negatives here. I'm not gonna go through the uh, details, but uh, uh, the disclosure uh, result depends on if S over S prime over S double prime is high or low. So you want to be uh, disclosing. So for example, here, uh, if you want to just look at this side, uh, when you care about the consumers more, but the, uh, the supply function is concave, uh, you want to disclose at the beginning and then pull all the sellers. So this is uh, where the point that you want to be uh, when S, oh, S prime over S double prime is increasing, you want to be pull at the uh, higher end and this goes at the uh, lower end. Okay. So let me, uh, don't have a lot of time. Let me give you some uh, overview of this uh, second result of the paper. So here, when you want to actually uh, maximize total surplus, uh, given that the second effect uh, is sort of arbitrages away, you always want to give all the information. Uh, but we see a lot of times that you're just giving um, limited number of information. And what we want to see is that, okay, what happens if you can only give the few signals. Uh, first, we show that if you want to give a few signals, uh, you, you want to give partitions. So the best thing to do is to find uh, Z1, Z2, Z3 and say, uh, give this signal that the sellers are between the Z lower bar and Z1, between Z1 and Z2 and so on. So this will give you what is the average quality in between. So the, what buyers will expect is the average quality of the sellers that are in within each of these intervals. Uh, so what we show here is that when you want to choose this Z's to maximize the total surplus, uh, you have this necessary condition, just forget about uh, the top uh, one for now. And what it tells you, this is the average cost and benefit of uh, increasing this uh, ZK, the threshold ZK. The cost is, okay, these guys are gonna be producing higher uh, quantity, but the benefit is uh, uh, how uh, you, you have some uh, extra production, which is beneficial uh, that, um, when you're looking at total surplus because the price of this just one uh, get to the other. So this is the condition uh, that is quite intuitive, but the problem is that all this uh, quantity, uh, the total quantity in the market and uh, the average, uh, uh, the quantity for each uh, seller is going to be endogenous and we show uh, another in another proposition how we will find this 
so uh, given that I don't have a lot of time, the main idea here is that uh, this is the k-mean criteria for optimal clustering. And the main idea here is that you want to put this uh, thresholds at the at different levels such that you give the most uh, amount of information possible. So this is like the clustering thing in uh, um, um, that uh, people uh, do all the time. So you want to sort of cluster the cells and give uh, give clusters of the cells which are most similar to each other, and the different clusters you want to be as far away as possible. So you're sort of giving these signals such that you give the uh, most Im amount of information. And what we show uh, uh, later is about the performance and want to see how much of this welfare gap is in total surplus, uh, of total surplus you can give when you give, uh, you move from uh, like how much, like the total welfare gap being between the total welfare gap of full versus no information. And want to see how much of this welfare gap you close when uh, with different number of thresholds. And here uh, we show that, for example, this is for some different distributions. You can see with only one, so when you put only have two groups, so one signal, so like certification, with even just one, uh, you can get uh, quite a bit of um, uh, this gap caused with just one signal. And when you get to the five signal, so it would be like one to five a star, you get to very like you know, more than like 90% and above. And one thing to note here is this is the amount of number of sellers who are gonna be uh, bad. And you can see that this uh, number of sellers can be actually quite low. So it can be 5%, 9%, 20%. So this is um, the share of the sellers who are gonna be bad. Uh, uh, the, uh, rate of them. And uh, so just having one threshold. So it can be quite selective. So I think this is a very cool result because it sort of tells you that, uh, okay, in this model, we didn't have any cause for acquiring information or for the uh, buyers who are seeing these signals, uh, trying to uh, understand what the signal means. So we don't have any of those costs in the model, but if you include any of them, then it might be actually optimal to just give one or two signals because uh, uh, you can see that you can get quite far by just giving one signal. So it can be sort of give you some intuition why you have this uh, very often in a lot of marketplaces where you give just very uh, limited number of signals uh, about the sellers. Uh, so the takeaway of this uh, paper is that the optimal disclosure depends on the curvature of the supply function uh, as well as the slope of supply function. So, um, uh, and when you're maximizing total surplus, it's best to disclose your or information because you reall uh, reallocate market share uh, from low quality to high quality sellers and this average, uh, this increase average quality and, and overall is better. But when you care, for example, more for the sellers or more for buyer, depending on the supply function, you sometimes want to hide some information. So even for the consumers, uh, sometimes it's better, uh, uh, they prefer not to see some information. And uh, we show that uh, there is a, for the linear supply case, uh, there is a simple solution when you want to give uh, only limited number of signals. So this is the K-mean clustering technique actually, and it's very easy to find. Uh, and the gains from giving this uh, signals decreases fast in the number of thresholds. So when you have uh, more, uh, like with 
only one you get about 50% and with five you get close to 90% most of the time. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Maya. Uh, now the floor is open for, for questions. So if you, if any of you has any questions, uh, I guess uh, you can uh, put it in the, in the chat and I'll, uh, I'll give you the, I'll give you the mic. Um, so, so I have a, I have a couple. Um, so, so re regarding this, this first bullet point on the, um, on the on the takeaway slide i mean this is a, a broad question but i'm, I'm intrigued by, by the, the the sort of the, the connection that your work has with the the connection on third degree price discrimination and demand curvature so it seems okay. like you're, you're looking at the sort of the dual problem in a sense uh, that i sort of i can't make make precise but i don't know if you do, do you have you thought about the the connection there uh, is there something to say uh, actually not. I have to think about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think it's sort of is. Uh, yeah, I guess it is sort of a similar because like with third degree uh, price discrimination, uh, you're sort of thinking about the buyer side, right? And you're doing it sort of similar. Uh, actions here right so you're deciding uh what how to group buyers so it's sort of similar to this one exactly yeah hey anyway, i have to uh think about this yeah yeah that, that might be actually sort of very dual problem of that um Okay, so uh, also another point that I had is that uh, so when you discuss, you know, this, uh, uh, this simple solution for the, the, the supply case, mm -hmm. uh, the linear supply case, sorry, uh, yeah. you assume that basically the platform can really, and I mean that this is the, the assumption of your work, that the platform can sort of partition the, the signals whatever way it, it wants. Uh, so in practice, I guess one challenge is that um, you know, even if eBay, say, gives a five-star mm -hmm. scale, um, the, 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 the empirical distribution that you observe is not at all sort of uniformly distributed or even normally. It's like everyone is like five stars. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so is there a so, way to... Yeah, so I mean, here, um, what I have in mind is not just like... Um, is for, for, for the platform to observe the information and decide what information they're going to be transmitting. So actually one thing that I've noticed or realized is that a lot of times now uh, even Amazon doesn't give you exactly the average uh, ratings of the items. So even the five star rating that you see might be a function of is this a function of uh, feedbacks that uh, consumers have received but it's not exactly the average so you can be sort of getting all the information but what you're going to be transmitting is not just a simple average of them uh, it can be okay i'm gonna give uh, five, four and above to just 10 percent of the sellers based on these criteria and so on um, so it's it's not just transmitting the information that you get. So one thing actually in all of these papers uh, at the moment, uh, this is uh, something for future research is that um, for now, uh, I have uh, assumed that the platform exactly sees the information about uh, the quality of the sellers and uh, Mm, but it needs one other feedback level, uh, which is not modeled yet. And that's a part that uh, you see some signal from the buyers and then how to translate that uh, to the quality of the sales. So that 
layer of it is actually missing in all this research at the moment. Mm. So this dynamic part of actually how to get the information, uh, how to solicit uh, this quality information is actually missing here. Okay. So does anyone else uh, have a question? So I'm not seeing anything on the, um, on the chat. So I don't know if my chat is not working or if... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was very clear. <laughs> yes. Uh, Alex, let me try a couple of questions. This is uh, Bruno Julien speaking. Uh, do you hear me first? Yeah, we uh, hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a poor microphone. Now, I have a question that uh, to link the first part and the second part, because the first part was a lot about uh, exit and entry of... Uh, Sellers and the second part is really an intensive margin, but there is no extensive margin. So, what would happen if you, let's say, introduce fixed cost in the second part and perfect signal or something like that? Yeah, so we have some extensions uh, for that in this paper as well. So, uh, it actually uh, makes it. Uh, 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 so, so when we get there, we have to make, uh, make some further assumptions about supply and uh, we have this linear supply, but uh, the results are, uh, yeah, let me think about that. Uh, so when we have entry into the market, so here we are assuming that uh, for all the sellers, uh, they're, they're in the market here and there is no entry. Uh, but when you do have uh, uh, entry margin, uh, let's see. Well, um, what happens? So the result that we have is mostly for uh, the few uh, thresholds and uh, we don't have a result for the full disclosure part. So for the full disclosure, uh, for the disclosure part, uh, you will have a similar thing with wanting to, like when you wanted to disclose more, you're gonna be having the same kind of result uh, you're gonna wanting to disclose it when you have the entry uh, condition as well uh, the it, the results probably will be different when you are not gonna be uh, the result without entry margin was uh, no disclosure uh, at some points because when you do that then you might be uh, impacting entry uh, and uh, uh, that that's the part that we have to work on. Uh, so we have some uh, preliminary results, but they're not actually uh, very complete, but uh, uh, it, it sort of makes it uh, a bit uh, harder. Let me see if I remember exactly what's, Okay, so, so here the, the point is like when you have entry as well as uh, uh, sellers producing, when uh, you give, uh, uh, for example, if you give no information, that will make the average quality a bit higher, average price a bit higher for lower quality sellers. So it would sort of give this lower quality sellers entering the market uh, in higher rates and increasing your total quantity in the market. So it sort of makes this impacts, uh, it impacts the results actually 
uh, make it a bit uh, yeah actually stop sharing so I can uh, see everyone uh, so it will make the uh, results a, 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 the effects a bit uh, stronger so it sort of uh, ha goes to the same direction and makes it a bit stronger uh, but that's for the linear supply case um, and we have to uh, uh, do it for the uh, full disclosure for the disclosure uh, condition actually uh, and uh, for the full uh, uh, full supply function we haven't done that thank you anyone else Okay, so I guess uh, I guess that was uh, that was all very clear, Mariam. So uh, so uh, thanks a lot. Um, we uh, we'll have another uh, seminar in uh, in two weeks' time. Uh, that this time it will be Andre Fratkin. Uh, so thanks for joining us, and uh, see you see you in a couple of weeks. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye, thank you.